Mr. Thrive and Survive is back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the man who has made a career out of misunderstanding eclipses has decided to return, and guess what? He's up to his old tricks. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. So, if you are a new subscriber and haven't seen yet, Mr. Thrive and Survive is part of one of the biggest trilogies of the last 10 years. First, he thought that NASA had debunked themselves, then he got eclipses wrong for the one millionth time, and finally he was dealt the ultimate debunk as we proved a shadow does get smaller than the object casting it. Well, this time round he thinks he's found some evidence which he is calling the Lunar Black Swan. Basically, he thinks he's the only one to have found this evidence and that it absolutely, without fail, proves that the moon is not real. I cannot wait for this one. Come on then, Thrive and Survive. Away you go. Hello everyone. Christmas for Thrive and Survive, April 6, 2020. I am very excited to bring this to you. Many of you have probably seen this if you have uh, subscribe to Mike Ball's channel. I want to go through and mention some things uh, that aren't directly mentioned. Uh, he plays music in the background uh, for this video. I'm just going to let it play through here. And uh, as you'll see, the link is in the description for this entire, uh, I think it's a minute, minute and a half video. Mike Ball is a good friend of mine. We do observations together. And just to let you know, for the naysayers, we're going to be going out there and filming ourselves, filming ourselves do this. Oh, I hope you do, Rich. I really do. Because the other side is highly upset already with this, and that's a good sign, isn't it? Uh, isn't it amazing how we are the ones actually doing the science? We're the ones doing the observation, and yet we're the ones told that we are anti-science. Uh, we're ignorant. We don't know anything. That's because you're doing these observations and coming up with the wrong conclusions. And then you dig your heels in when you're told you are wrong. This one, for example, that you're about to show is gloriously wrong. Just a classic. And just, just listen to just three of the things that are wrong with the heliocentric model that can be shown just by this one observation. Three things from one observation, hey? Wow, the confidence is unreal here, guys, isn't it? Now, to set this up, as Mike says here in the title, one ball, one light source. It's the same light source for both the moon and anything else. And the observations that we see should match 100% what we see with the moon and any large ball we see on the Earth should match. This right here is a Doppler radar unit. And I have a much better photograph of this that I need to dig out and show you guys that will show one of the things that absolutely proves that the light uh, of the moon is its own light. It is not reflected light. And we're going to see that. And that's not pointed out directly in this video. Uh, but Mike, I think, has introduced uh, what I call the, uh, the lunar black swan or the moon's black swan event. So Mr. Thrive and Survive thinks that this evidence is so good that us normal people over here will ignore it because it destroys the fact that the moon and by extension space is not what we think it is. And uh, there's the, the swan poking a hole in the NASA model of what we should see. So this is the Doppler radar that he took. Uh, we actually stood right next to this. This is what we were going to use in one of our uh, actual two scale, one, one ninety second millionth uh, scale of the sun and moon and the angles but let me pause it right there there you see there's the moon and the first thing I noticed which according to Mike is not the biggest deal is that the angles don't match and the other side freaked out and said yeah nice try Mike what you did was you uh, tilted the camera so that the angles didn't match well they don't you are looking at the Doppler radar at a different angle than you're looking at the moon from your perspective, more of that Doppler ball is being illuminated by the sun. As you can see here, and he will blow it up, they absolutely do not match. Yes, they should match, if you are viewing the ball and the moon from the same angle. And when you take this and slow it down, he actually zooms in and zooms out. Uh, if there's any tilt whatsoever, it's actually tilted towards the ball side of the equation here. But that, again, it doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter because we're going to go out there and we're going to film ourselves filming this and he's going to have it on a tripod so there is going to be no tilting and uh, you will know 100% that what you see on the camera lens is actually what we recorded. When you do that, you need to stand almost under the Doppler ball and make sure that the moon is, from your perspective, just behind the ball. Then you'll be looking at the two objects from the same angle and the shadows cast will be exactly the same. Again, these two should match. Even this right here should tell you, unless you're on a very small device looking at this, they absolutely do not match. And let me just run it through a little bit here and then we're going to look at the differences. So there's the moon during the day. All right taking the exact same time uh, you can see the angles are definitely different he of course means the shadow cast not the angle and what Mike likes to point out is the amount of the ball that's covered is different I would have never actually even thought about that but that's true and then you have people well if you're on the right angle it would be the same uh, I don't think so but again we will cover that Mike actually went out later and went to different angles and uh, it was the exact same thing but Rich, take a look at the Doppler properly. Half of it is illuminated and half of it is not. If you stood here and look at it as the same angle as the moon, then it would look just like the moon does. Look at the angle here. Look at the angle here. But here's something I want to point out. Let me get to it here. Oh man, here comes the analysis. Uh, so what he's done is he's applied that angle over here. <laughs> Not quite a match. And again, uh, yes, we uh, we don't have the um, necessary controls yet uh, to prove this, but we will, folks. And this is going to absolutely, as he says here, nonsense. But look at that middle image. You can clearly see that you're viewing the two objects from massively different angles. It's going to absolutely knock out the heliocentric, it's lit up by the sun model. It's close. It's close to being what the sun would be lighting up, but not quite. No cigar. So let me get to where, and he zooms out here, and you can see. I can get it here, guys. Let me sh shorten up my little presentation here so I can do this for you. He zooms out, and if you, if anything, he's tilted slightly to where he makes the ball. Uh, a little um, too far uh, straight up and down. So it's the opposite of what they need on their side. But here's what I want to point out. A third problem. You've got the angle. You've got the amount of the ball that's covered. And then here is the ultimate, no doubt about it, in-your-face proof. Here we go. That the moon is self-illuminated. It is not reflecting sunlight. And it is not a ball. And how can we tell that? Very simply, look at the left side here. Do you see the hot spot? And as you go away from the hot spot, it tapers off. Here's a very good taper right here. Here's another good taper, another excellent taper till you get to dark, correct? So let me kind of show that visually right here. The red inner circle, and I know this isn't perfect because uh, I'm not uh, high enough on the ball at this time. We will have, or I do have a photograph of this when the, uh, uh, the sun was actually quite low in the sky. So it was more directly on like this where my cursor is right here. And once I dig that photograph up, you'll see it very obviously. Oh boy, he's really going with this. The Doppler ball is usually made from fiberglass. Now that is a material that is very different to the regolith on the moon's surface. The comparison he is about to make is completely pointless. So you've got the brightest spot in the red, in the red and again this could be moved up a little bit. I, you know, My artwork can't go 3D, uh, not with my skill. Uh, and then you have this which isn't quite as, as, as light. And then you have the first blue line and that demarks where you really start to get a difference. Can you see the difference between in between this blue, these two blue lines and the blue and the orange line here? Significant difference. And then you see the significant difference here. And then if I put another line, this would be actually the dark part. Now, why isn't it totally dark? Because we have the earth and it's giving you some uh, reflected back light uh, from everything around it. So this is what you see everywhere when you have a 3D light source or a ball that has 
reflected light. Incorrect. A tennis ball doesn't do that. And why doesn't a tennis ball do that? Because of the material it's made from. Whereas the moon, you don't have that whatsoever. Now I'm adding this in post-production. I really want to ask the question from people on the other side. What is it you don't get about this observation? Always, there is no exception. If you have a ball that is reflecting light from a light source, you always get this diminished brightness as you get away from the center of where the light source is. We do not have that with the moon at all. None of it. Nope, because of the properties of the moon's surface. This is how the moon reflects light. Because of the regolith on the moon's surface, we get diffuse reflection, meaning the light is reflected in all directions. All around the edges of the moon, it should be getting darker and darker. We don't get that. How can you explain that? How can you hold on to NASA telling you that it is a ball that is reflecting sunlight when it goes against 100% of the observations we have of any object whatsoever that is a 3D ball reflecting light? I'd really like to hear that answer. Because it's an example of diffuse reflection, much like this. No hotspot. So let's take a look at it side by side. Where is the hotspot? Where does it taper off? Yes, yes, we've heard your argument and it is a rubbish one. Once again, Rich, you have been proved utterly wrong. I think I've had enough of his ramblings now. And guess what? It's been over a month since Mr. Thrive and Survive released this video and we are still yet to get a second observation. Maybe they went down there and filmed it at the correct angle and realized they were wrong. Who knows? Anyway, that brings an end to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please, please do like and subscribe. It'd be thoroughly appreciated. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and I'll see you all on Friday for Flat Earth Fail Compilation 12. See you then. <laughs>